Hey everyone, it's your old pal Blaze, the handheld Steam Deck addict, and today we're going to have a little chat about something that's got me quietly buzzing with excitement, and that is the future of the Steam Deck and handheld gaming in general. Now, Val's Pierre Lepay Griffet, the genius behind SteamOS and the Steam Deck, just did this fascinating interview with The Verge, and he talks about ARM chips, and honestly, it makes me think that we could see a massive shift coming, especially when it as it relates to the Steam Deck too, and how ARM efficiency, ARM's efficiency could revolutionize battery life, especially on handhelds and the Steam Frame, the new VR headset from Valve is basically going to be testing the waters for that going forward. Could Valve's new focus on making Windows games and Windows software work on ARM processors, um, is that a sign that they're testing the wars for potentially an ARM-powered Steam Deck too? Well, it's kind of exciting. It's early days, but let's talk about it and let's get into it. I'm Blaze Decay. Like, subscribe, click the bell icon. And of course, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Antel Game is always close to my heart. I'm fiddling around with the EYN Thor right now. We'll get into that in another video, but let's get into it. Just imagine the potential for an ARM-powered ARM Steam Deck with like eight plus hours of battery life playing a pretty good AAA game. Can you imagine? All right, so let's start with a beginner rundown so we're all on the same page, right? Your, your current Steam Deck runs an x80 chip, x86 chip from AMD. So think traditional PC architecture, powerful, but it guzzles battery life like crazy, as we all know, during long sessions. Well, ARM, that's the sort of technology that's in your phone in Apple laptops. And it's incredibly, amazingly power efficient. Well, it also packs a serious punch these days, especially for anything portable, especially for games, software it just seems to go on and on and on that's why we have like 10 12 hour battery lives on our phones and if we can get that into a portable gaming device and we've already seen things like the IUYN Thor and a lot of Android handhelds pop up out of the woodwork lately for emulation and we've seen crazy battery lives from them it begs the question, why don't they put these into gaming PCs? And Valve is finally starting to look at that and think, you know what, that might be a good idea. And to highlight that point, we'll go to this part of the interview with Pierre, um, where the Verge asked him, why ARM? And to cut to the chase, he says, because there's a lot of price points and power consumption points where ARM-based chipsets are doing better, a better job of serving the market. When you get into lower power, anything lower than the Steam Deck, I think you'll find that there's an ARM chip that may be is just competitive is competitive with x86 offerings in that segment hmm so i'm thinking you know the way things are going we could see an arm chip inside an, a future steam deck maybe a steam deck light especially if they can get the software optimization working which they're already doing with the steam frame vr headset they are porting over software just as they did for the steam deck getting windows games to run on linux um, via proton they're obviously working on that new compatibility layer that makes windows software work on arm chips x86 into arm if they can get that right just as they did with proton the possibilities, the possibilities are truly endless in terms of handheld gaming PCs. I mean, think if we did get a Steam Deck 2, being able to run Android on it, set up, you know, run Android, um, run Android apps, Android emulation. Like I said, I've been playing with the AYN Thor, the new little clamshell um, double double screened handheld that runs Android and obviously an ARM chip and it's really powerful it can play a lot of games all the way up to Switch um, so it's very comparable to the Steam Deck in terms of performance so if ARM is almost there in terms of being able to d deliver Steam Deck level performance already um, at like a fraction of the power consumption of x86 chips um, it's not far off to think that we could be seeing an ARM chip in a future Steam Deck, right? Um, so the takeaway here is that ARM excels where power matters most and like handhelds like the Steam Deck, obviously, um, it can be very important and it leaves the door open for a Steam Deck or deck equivalent performance very soon. Imagine your Steam Deck lasting like eight to 10 hours on demanding games instead of, you know, instead of draining mid boss fight with like a one hour to two hours of battery life. Um, that's the dream and it's keeping me up at night just thinking about the possibilities. Now, like I said before, Valve isn't just talking about this, they're actually doing it. Now, let's talk about the Steam Frame, the brand new standalone VR headset announced last month. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 ARM chip, 16 gigs of RAM, full Steam OS, literally full Steam OS. Um, it runs your Steam library locally um, via that compatibility layer we were talking about. Lighter games shine a lot more, obviously, or and it, it can stream heavier games from your PC. I can already do the same with my Steam Deck. I stream a lot of heavier PC games like Arc Raiders to my Steam Deck 
even though the Steam Deck can run Arc Raiders alone on its own locally, um, I do like to stream from my gaming PC for just crispier visuals, right? And I'm usually against game streaming, but lately I've actually been enjoying it. Um, but yeah, battery and heat stay in check. Crucial for something strapped to your face, obviously, with the Steam Frame. Um, so having an ARM chip in there with lower heat output, with longer battery life it makes a lot of sense and obviously as i spoke in my last video i talked i spoke about the quest 3 it also uses an arm chip and the performance and the visuals and the experiences we get on something with an arm chip it's getting really comparable to what's already out there with x86 hardware and obviously it's a little bit cheaper as well so that works in its favor especially for handheld gaming devices that are creeping up to like 1100 1200 dollars um not only are we getting performance, battery life improvements, but also price improvements if we do end up switching over to ARM. And if this Steam Frame switch, this compatibility layer bringing Windows software, Windows games over to ARM chips, x86 software over to ARM, if this works out and it pans out, there could be endless benefits. And I keep stressing that, and I'm going to keep batting that point home. There could be endless benefits to bringing those chips into gaming PCs, especially that run Linux, right? I mean... Could potentially see rog and asus making arm powered windows devices as we know windows is actually got windows does actually support arm now they have their own arm version so i think that's the way things are going x86 it's great for gaming pcs desktop pcs that consume a lot of power but as we move mobile battery life is one of the most key important factors in a handheld gaming pc i actually put up a poll in my community tab here on the channel asking you what's the most important thing you want from the steam deck 2 and the majority of you the overwhelming majority i believe voted that it was battery life i had to double check but yes what is the most important feature of a PC gaming handheld? Battery life, you guys voted first. Raw power, second. Screen, third. And the size, fourth. Um, so yeah, battery life is very important to you guys. Um, I caught that and we had, I believe we had hundreds of votes for that. Uh, okay, I bet, my bad, 96 votes, but still. <laughs> subscribe, please subscribe, because I love putting these polls down here and asking you guys what you expect and what you want to see in future handhelds. And it's good to gauge that, you know, gauge that feedback from the community, because you never know who's reading, you never know who's watching these videos. It might be someone at Valve, you never know. And, you know, we might be talking about something that might end up being a good idea. Who knows? Let's go back to the article here. Um, when you say include all those options, you're thinking there will be other ARM SteamOS devices too? Steam Deck? He says, yeah, and I'm excited about that. I think it paves the way for a bunch of different, maybe ultra portables, making uh, maybe more powerful laptops being ARM based and using different offerings in that segment. Handhelds, there's a lot of potential for ARM, of course, and one might see desktop chips as well at some point in the ARM world. Desktops are not completely out of the question. Designs like, say, the framework desktop use essentially a big SOC, right? And those big SOCs have, have existed in the ARM world for a while. Apple's making very good quality examples of that, so that's not too crazy. Um, to imagine something like that in the PC space at some point. Obviously, touching on Apple, Apple did move away from Intel's 8, x86 architecture to make their own ARM M1 chip line. And as you could tell, I mean, the power efficiency we now have on Macs, because they switched to their own silicon, because they've switched to ARM, the ARM architecture, we're seeing 10 hours plus of battery life on our MacBooks now and insane performance compared to what's currently available on x86. So it doesn't surprise me that the game, I mean, even gaming on Mac is pretty impressive now because of that switch. Um, so it, it begs the question, like, why aren't they moving towards ARM faster? Um, is it just to support companies like AMD and Intel or is there are other reasons behind it, but I think, you know, Apple's obviously proven that it can be done. Um, Arm's no longer a mobile phone only architecture. It is able to handle higher end applications and software, especially games. Um, and that's the way we're seeing things go forward. And I think Pierre here is just highlighting that it's very possible that we might even see at some point, you know, Arm being used in gaming PCs and a variety of devices, Steam Deck. So they're keeping their eyes open. And again, back to the article briefly, um, is the ARM version of SteamOS a separate operating system? So he says, so when you're looking at SteamOS on ARM, you're really looking at the same thing. Instead of downloading the normal Proton that's built for x86 and targets x86 games, it will also be able to download a Proton that's ARM aware, that has a bulk of its code compiled for ARM and 
also include the FEX emulator. So this is gold, just like Proton translated Windows games to Linux on your deck. No dev porting required. Now there's ARMaware Proton plus FEX, and FEX is a JIT emulator that converts x86 code to ARM on the fly, but only the game bits. APIs run native for minimal performance hit, obviously, and Valve's funded FEX since 2016, which is genius. Devs focus on games, not architectures, so Valve will take care of, you know, the translation x86 to arm developers just have to make great games and release them um as valve tidies up stuff and just make sure it works and runs really well on different hardware and they've proven they've proven time and time again they can do it they're doing it and it's paying off big time we're seeing people install we're seeing people install steam os and linux um on their Windows devices, on their gaming PCs, for the performance boost. Native Windows software, native Windows games that were developed for Windows are running better on SteamOS and Linux um, distros. Thanks to Proton, thanks to the compatibility layer, they're actually running better on non-native software as than they are on Windows, which is just wild to think about. Now, here's my opinionated take. Now, I'm brimming with excitement here. If Valve nails specs, and protons and polish proton arm may be primed to take over handheld gaming pcs battery life becomes unbeatable think about all day gameplay without a charger without having to find your charger right and the steam frame proves that the tech works today today for lighter loads and pair that with next gen arm silicone qualcomm's pushing really hard on make delivering you know new chips and new silicon that can handle demands of vr gaming we've already seen their their vr gaming line that the quest uses the xr2 chip um and we're seeing more chips come out all the time um the steam deck 2 could match current performance at half the power draw so no more compromises i think it's really exciting and I think Pierre's excitement around this um, mirrors mine a lot, and it probably mirrors yours as well. Huge potential for handhelds, but for sure, it's no sure thing as of yet, right? X86 still stays king for high-end desktops, arms for portables, um, and there will obviously be emulation overhead, 10 to 20%, but obviously we've seen with Proton, you know, <laughs> that overhead especially with the blow on windows and stuff it can be shrunken down easily not every game is going to be perfect but i think as far as n now is concerned and with the steam deck 2 valve obviously leads with reference hardware right just like the steam deck spark sparked the handheld boom it was this this was the thing that really sparked this handheld boom that we've seen with the rog ally and the lenovo legion go a lot of companies rushed to make a competitor to the steam deck because we were yearning for a good handheld that can play pc games and full-fledged games on the go sony's playing catch up they're going to be working on their new psp2 or the psv2 whatever it's called the ps6 portable um i believe xbox have obviously hedged their bet with the xbox rogue ally and i believe they might be considering releasing their own version um their own in-house handheld although that's on the flippity flop right now we don't know if it's been cancelled we don't know if it's still in development we'll wait and see but as always i feel like valve as always is leading the charge in terms of what might be big in the future and the fact that they're jumping into this whole arm race right now um getting games compatible getting x86 software compatible on arm you know they're jumping into this early they see the writing on the wall arm is power efficient it's getting more powerful by the day and it's getting especially more relevant for handheld and portable devices and if valve are doing it now you just know other companies are going to be trying to race to catch up um and i'm truly excited it feels like the start of something transformative for steam deck owners like us arm could make handhelds completely and truly untethered if they get the software right but let me know what you think arm steam deck 2 hype or are you gonna wait and see drop it in the comments i read all the comments and if you're new please consider liking subscribing clicking the bell icon for more steam deck chats check out the article from the verse down below and see pierre's full, full comments thank you for hanging out and i'll catch you next time take care happy holidays it's december we made it through another year um and i'll try to put up a community poll um in the community section so like i said after subscribing consider heading over there and voting in the poll about whether you want an arm steam deck 2 or whether you want it to stay on x86 let me know in the comments i'm blaze peace out i'll see you in the next one let's go